Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video we are taking a look at nested loops in Python. First we will take a look at two examples and after that we will apply nested loops to create structures like a pyramid. So be sure to stay tuned to don't miss this important concept. Taking a look at our first task, we have to print out 0 to 2 three times. And you already know how to print out 0 to 2, right? You are just defining a for loop and you need the range and you need to print out every element inside this range. So this is how you get 0 to 2, right? Now how can you achieve to get it three times? Well, the first solution and maybe the worst solution is to just type the syntax three times here, right? I'm not doing it, but you could do that and you would achieve the solution we want to get, right? But um, we want to do that via a nested loop to save some lines of codes and of course to professionalize our code. So, and of course to understand the concept of nested for loops. So we have to define for j in range here, take three again and print out j. And what we are getting is what we wanted to get here, right? Now, what is happening here in detail? The outer loop is running its first iteration. This first iteration is triggering the inner loop. The inner loop runs to completion, so this is fully executed. After that, the next iteration is being called and is again triggering the whole inner loop again. To make this more understandable, we could add our outer iterator inside this print statement here. And what we are getting here is our i here and our j here. And what we are noticing here is what we just described and that is our i is not getting to the next iteration until our j is being fully completed. Right? So 0, 1, 2. Then we are getting to the next step or to the next iteration which is 1. And then again the j is being executed until the end. And then our next one is being triggered. Right? Now that you have an idea about the functionality of nested for loops, let's move to the next example and that is creating a list of integer dates from January 2010 to December 2011. So an example would be January 2010 which is 2010.01. Well, if you want to try it on your own, pause the video right now. Our first step would be to create an empty list and we are calling this dates. After that we have to specify our start date and that should be January 2010. Let's execute that and define our nested loop. For the outer loop we need for i in range 2, I'm explaining that in a second. And for the inner loop we are defining the month. And what we're doing here in specific is to just append the starting value which is 2010.01 plus the inner iterator. So what is happening here in detail? Well, in the very first iteration, which is j equals to zero, the start value plus zero, so that is just our start value, is appended to this list. In the second iteration, which is j equals to one, the start value plus one is added to this list, which is 2010.02, February. The big question now is how do we get to the next year? And if we are taking a look at the start value again, we are noticing that we just have to increase the start value by 100 to get to 2011, right? And if we have achieved that, we can just loop over it again, increasing the month. So how can we apply that? Well, we are just defining the start value as start plus 100 after this inner loop is executed. And let's execute that for sure. And if we are executing that and printing out our dates here, we are getting what we wanted to get. So what is happening here again in detail? The outer loop is running its first iteration here, triggering the inner loop. And this inner loop is just adding 1 until 12 to this starting value here. And that is what you are seeing here. So we are getting every month from 1 to 12 in 2010. After running this, the start value is getting resetted to this variable here and is added up 100 here. So you are getting 2011 here, 0, 1. So this is just that 
plus 100. And after that, the next iteration of this outer loop is running, triggering again this inner loop. And that is just doing the same thing again, adding up 1 until 12 to this starting date. By the way, if we are extending the range above here, we are just using more years. So you can even do that for 5 or 10 years. By the way, if you have solved that on your own, you made great progress. And if you have an alternative approach for that, I'm really looking forward for your comments. But for now, let's move to the next step, which is creating crazy structures. And we will start by building a triangle. The first step to actually understand the whole concept of structures or patterns in Python is to understand the print syntax in Python. And for that, let us define for i in range 3. And let's just print out a hashtag here, or whatever that is called. And what we're getting is this hashtag here, and it is printed out one after the other, right? And if I want to print that out in a line, I have to add an argument to this print statement, which is and equals to nothing, okay? And what's happening then is that those items are printed in a line. So the default argument in a print statement is next line, which is like, where is this symbol? Which is this one here. So this is the default argument in a print statement. So if you are just typing it in like that, you're getting this one here. And we have to adapt that by defining and as nothing here. And this is just giving us the hashtags in a line. And that's actually the most important thing you have to understand for building those patterns. With that logic and a nested loop, we can actually build a triangle. So what do we have to type in? For i in range, and we are taking 3 here for 3 rows, and we are defining our inner loop as the range of this outer iterator. No worries, we will explain it in detail what's happening here. In this inner loop, we are printing out our hashtag and our defined argument as end of nothing. And here we are printing out our normal hashtag. If we're executing that, we got our triangle here. So what is happening step by step? In the first iteration for i in range, we got i equals to zero. This is triggering the inner loop for j in range of 0. So this is printing out nothing at all. But this one is printing out our hashtag and that is why we have a hashtag here in the very first iteration. Next iteration, i equals to 1. This loop is triggering the inner loop again and we have for j in range 1. So this is printing out a single hashtag here which is why we have two hashtags here, because this is also printing out a hashtag, right? So we have these two hashtags here. Next iteration, for i in range, and now we have i equals to 2. For j in range 2, we are getting two hashtags, plus the hashtag from the outer loop here, and that is why we are getting three hashtags here. Of course, you can change the size of this triangle by just amending this range here. So you are getting bigger triangles. Next step is to build a pyramid and what we are noticing is that we already got half of this pyramid here. So let's actually change that back to 3, keep it more lucid. So we need the left hand side of this pyramid. So let's approach to building a pyramid now. Let's start by building the left edge of this pyramid. So we are defining the outer loop as for i in range 3 and the inner loop for j in range and then we are taking the actual range here minus the iterator. Now we are printing out an empty space here and also we are telling Python to end at nothing again. And after that, we are printing out our hashtag. So let's execute that and let us go through that in detail. What's happening here? Well, first iteration, for i in range, i equals to 0. For j in range, 3 minus 0 is 3. So I'm getting three empty spaces here, right? And after that, the hashtag is being printed. 
Next iteration, for i equals 1. For j in range, 3 minus 1 is 2. And I'm getting two empty spaces here, right? And after that, the hash is being printed. So we got that. Third one, for i in range, i equals to 2. For j in range, 1. And I'm getting one empty space here. And after that, my hashtag is being printed. Now let us use that and add our inner loop, which we just defined before. So we are just copying that into a new cell here. And we have to add another inner loop here. And this is the exact same loop as we defined before. So for i in range of this iterator, print out our hashtag and nothing. And if we're executing that, we're getting the left-hand side of our pyramid. So what is happening in detail? For i in range, for the first iteration, i equals to 0. For j in range, 3 minus 0, we are getting printed out three empty spaces here. So that is here. After that, this loop is being triggered for j in range, but this is 0, so this is printing out nothing. But this one is, and that is why we are getting this hashtag here. Next iteration, i equals to 1. For j in range, 3 minus 1 is 2. So we are getting two empty spaces here. And that is here. And the next loop is giving us for j in range 1 here. And that is why we're getting the first hashtag here and the second hashtag here. That is why we have two hashtags here. The last iteration for i in range and i is equal to 2, we are getting for j in range 1. We're just getting one empty space here and then this loop is giving us two hashtags and additionally this hashtag is being added, ending in the left hand side of our pyramid. And if we want to finish that we actually have to do a very simple one again and that is by just copying this loop again and just inserting it right here. So this is the exact same syntax and we are printing this out. And what we are getting is this nice pyramid here. I won't go through each iteration again as the same logic applies. So how can we even improve this code? Well, we could define this range here as x and actually define x as an integer input. So define size of pyramid. And if we're executing that, we can actually provide the row numbers here and actually create pyramids um, of different sizes here. So if you even want to create a BA pyramid, you can define 20 and so on and so forth. So have fun by playing a bit around with that and actually understand that it's pretty important to get the loop syntax in Python. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to drop me a comment. So let's go to the last part of this tutorial. Last but not least, nested list comprehension. And we need to understand that for our next tutorial where I do some matrix calculations without NumPy, by the way. Let us consider our very first example here. We created a nested loop from 0 to 2 here, three times in a row. And you could also achieve that by using nested list comprehension. How will you do that? Well, let's define nested list here as, and now you are needing those squared brackets here and in the inner bracket you are defining your inner loop here and that is j for j in range and then we're taking three and in the outer one you're just typing in for i in range three here. If we're executing that and actually print that out you see we are getting this here inside a list. That is called nested list comprehension. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm looking forward to welcome you in the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye bye.